I greet you once again with joy and with love on this Resurrection Sunday, giving praise and glory to God. Our scripture lesson comes to us from, from St. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. And I'd like to just lift up from the New International Version of the Bible, verses 5 to 8, to focus our attention on the word. Hear ye the word of God. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces on the ground, but the man said to them, Why? Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be must be delivered into the hands of sinful people, be crucified, and on the third day, raised again. Then they remembered his words. Beloved, he said to them, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? The word of God for the people of God, praise be to God. How to become fearless witnesses for Christ. Let us look to the Lord. O thou in whose presence my soul does take delight, in times of affliction I call, my comfort by day and my joy in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Eternal and wise God, I humbly come before you at this time. Merciful God, I ask that you not hold my sins against me at this hour, but Lord, that you take me deep down in your treasures and that you leave me there. O kind God, asking that you bring forth your preacher with all power and with all might, that you bring forth a word of healing and a word of love. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord. You are my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God do say amen. Amen, amen, and amen. How? How to become fearless witnesses for Christ. In this, in this year, our church has begun our Lenten journey. And together we have been reading the Cup of Salvation, our daily Lenten devotional. I don't know if you had a chance in all the busyness of yesterday to take a look at yesterday's lesson. But the lesson for yesterday focused our attention on fear. Being human, we can say that there is much in life that we encounter that would cause us to become fearful. If we're not careful, the fear can cause us, that creeps up into our lives, that fear can become a controlling factor over our lives. If we're not careful, the emotion of fear will begin to govern all aspects of our life rather than love. For you see, the Bible tells us that love is what we should be governed by. This devotion from yesterday, the cup of salvation, invites each of us, the author did, to sacrifice fear. You know when we begin our Lenten journey, we're at the end because here's Easter. But when Lent comes, we think to ourselves, what could I sacrifice? What offering can I make for the Lord? But the author of this, this lesson says to us, instead of making the sacrifice of candy or television programs, let us instead sacrifice fear. The fear of what if, the fear of not enough, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of change. In so doing, we too will grow closer to Christ when we sacrifice fear. By sacrificing fear, we have discovered in our Lenten journey that we have grown closer to the Lord. Oh, we have spent more time praying and fasting. We have spent more time learning how to lean on him, learning how to talk to him, learning how to trust him more and more. So yes, you and I, we can say today, just like David did in Psalms 27 verses one and two, 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Here in this text, this Easter Sunday morning text, we discover Mary Madeline, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and other women finding their way to the tomb of Jesus. It was early in the morning. It was before the sun had rose. You see, these women, they were witnesses of Christ. They were witnesses of some of his miracles, but they were also women who financially supported his ministry. So you see these women, in spite of their pain and their sorrow, they were making their way to the Savior, the one that they trusted, the one that they believed in. Their hearts were broken. They were sad, and even still, they could not believe what they had seen. But because of their great love, their commitment to him, they pressed their way forward to that tomb. And don't you know, we know the story, each of us. When they arrived there, it was something that they had not expected, something that they could not believe in the midst of their grief. When they arrived, they discovered that his body was not there, and they were greeted by two men who are, were angels. They were greeted by these men in the midst of their sorrow, in the midst of their confusion, wanting to know, searching for, trying to get a sense of what was happening. They wanted to know where his body was. But he said, it is not here. He has risen. Don't you remember what he told you? How could these women, in the midst of all they were going through, somehow acquire fearlessness? Fearlessness to go out and witness. They had already seen him crucified. They had already seen the most horrible death one could imagine. And yet, in their agony and in their pain, just the speaking of the words of the angels to them transformed them into fearless witnesses. I know that you may be saying to yourself, I too, this very year, have experienced joys and sorrows. I too, in this very year, have encountered things I could not imagine would have taken place. I want to know the secret. Can you tell me their secret? How could they become fearless witnesses for Christ? Well, the Bible tells us in this text, in order to be a fearless witness of Jesus Christ, first you got to know the man. You got to know him for yourself. You have to have confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord. You have to have had a personal encounter with him. He would have touched your lives just like he touched the lives of those women. Oh, we know Bible study scholars that Mary Madeline had been touched by him. She had been free of these demons. There's all kinds of examples in the scripture about how Christ met each woman and changed her life. Changed her life in such a way that she followed him changed her life in such a way that she gave her money for his ministry in order to become a fearless witness for Jesus Christ. You got to meet him. You got to have a personal relationship with him. I'm not talking about meeting him intellectually, reading in the scriptures and understanding the words. I'm not talking about being able to translate the Greek into English. I'm talking about a heart change. I'm talking about a change in your life where he has met you in the pardoning of your sins. When the man has met you, when you've been hungry, when you've been cold, when he has met you, when you didn't know how things were going to work out, when he has met you in the midnight hour, when you have been sad and rolling around on the floor crying out, that's when Jesus meets us. And you begin to have a personal relationship with him. It's a relationship different than any.
any other relationship you have had in your life. Because when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord, when you have made him king over your life, he begins to come into your heart and fill the brokenness of your heart. And he begins to breathe afresh and anew upon you. And you can say to anyone, I'm a witness. He's alive today. How do I know that he's alive? Because he lives inside of me. He's changed me. He's helped me. When you have had a personal relationship, when you've met Jesus in your heart, you can become a fearless witness. No matter what you go through, no matter what people say, no matter where you are, you can testify about the goodness of Jesus because he's dwelling deep down in your heart. You know that you're going to make it. You know that in this moment, even though it doesn't look like things are going to work out, you know that somehow he's going to show up and he's going to make it all right. So how we become a fearless witness for Christ. These women encountered him for themselves. They became his disciples. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 and verses 9 and 10, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall become saved. How can we become fearless witnesses for Christ? The text tells us that we must remember what he has told us. What he has told us. What did the Lord tell us when he entered our heart and made us one with him? He told us, fear not. Fear not because I'm with you. Fear not what people will say or do because I will provide for you and take care of you. Fear not. When we remember that Christ has told us, not to fear, then we can be bold and mighty in all things because the Holy Ghost that dwells inside of us will give us the power to do it. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We can go and look at Deuteronomy 31 and 6 and see that God says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or dread them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. So what are we to remember when we become a disciple of Christ? How can we become fearless witnesses for the Lord? Not to fear knowing that he's dwelling inside of us and he will make a way. He will provide for us, resting with him and on him and trusting him. The scripture goes on to tell us in the text, how can I become a fearless witness for Christ? Simply, dear hearts, testify. Tell somebody about the day you met Jesus. Tell somebody about what God is doing for you right now. Tell somebody how he made a way for you yesterday. Fear not what they say. Fear not where you are. Fear not what it looks like, people standing around. Testify about the goodness of the Lord. When you begin to tell your testimony, you encourage others. You bring Christ to them. They begin to see that he is inside of you and dwelling inside of you and that light that is permeating from you will draw others to him. The Bible reaffirms for us in John chapter 4, verse 26, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have done. So dear hearts, in order to be a fearless witness for Christ. First, you've got to have your own personal encounter with him and let him make you anew. In order to be a fearless witness for Christ, you don't need to 
find yourself in the middle of fear, you've got to shake it off and say, get behind me, Satan. The Bible says that fear does not come from the Lord, but it comes from Satan. How can I be a fearless witness for Christ? Simply begin to share your testimony and let the Holy Ghost take over. This day, each of us, we are the redeemed of the Lord. We are the Easter people. We are fearless, just like these women. Let us go out proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Let us go out being fearless witnesses for Christ. Amen.